My name's Christine, and I'm a YouTuber. I usually review the show week to week, but this season aired during summer, and I was always at cons, fighting a never-ending battle against time. But I finally watched all the episodes. Simon is still a vampire. Magnus is still a warlock from Brooklyn. Luke is still the werewolf pack leader and a New York City cop. And Jace, Izzy, and Alec are still here too. My name's Christine, and today I'm gonna be going through Shadowhunter season two, episodes 11 through 17. <laughs> Seventeen happened. <sighs> I gotta say, it feels real good to be caught up. I miss so much stuff. I'm gonna be going through with my commentary on all seven episodes I've missed. I enjoy Shadowhunters. I wish it all the best. That doesn't mean I think everything they do is perfect. I'm a giant fan of the book, so they will be compared. If you feel like this isn't for you, goodbye. You don't need to stay. Okay, so I'm gonna try to go in order by episode, but I can't make any guarantees that I'm not gonna make reference to stuff that happens in further episodes. So if you don't wanna be spoiled, just catch up and then come back and we'll discuss everything. Okay. Okay. Season 2, episode 11 opens up with Jace and Alec training together in this courtyard, which is a new Shadow Under set piece that they've integrated into the show this half of the season, and I like it. I enjoyed the fight sequence with Alec and Jace. We're introduced to the Inquisitor in this episode. She's not called Inquisitor Whitelaw, which is immediately Inquisitor Herondale. The show just like can't keep a secret for more than half a second. They set up the stuff we see in the book, which unravels so beautifully, but it's like they can't keep it to themselves. Before the end of the episode, they have to be like, ha, look, it's not what you think. We were gonna get there. Valentine's being held in the basement of the Institute and they're torturing him with, you guessed it, a rune. We have this guy, we need to torture him. How can we do it in the most efficient way? There's a rune for that. Is this in the book? Like, Raziel was like, okay, balance, stamina, healing, deflect. Let's throw in a torture. <laughs> It's in this episode that we're also introduced to this greater demon who just looks like a human. So he goes into this bar for funsies. He's just like, I'm gonna kill everyone. Everyone dies. Throughout this whole episode, we get the idea that this Azazel is all powerful. Izzy is in like hardcore withdrawals. Alex by her bedside. He's like, I'm not gonna leave you like this. And Izzy's like, no, go. You have a mission. Go. And I'm like, no, you cannot leave her like this. She's gonna go try to get another hit. Alec leaves her. She goes to Raphael to try to get another hit. We get the shot of Izzy like all disgustingly sweaty. <laughs> She's sitting at her makeup desk, smearing on some lipstick. And I'm just like, girl, you need a shower first. You can't just put makeup on your face when you're a sweat ball like that. Azazel shows up, Izzy's in trouble, and then I was so irritated the second Sebastian came on the screen. Like, I have so much hatred for that character that like literally anytime he's on screen, I was just like, ew, go away, I hate you. Will Tudor is great. He is good. Some of the stuff he has to do is weird, but like he does it good. Well casted, very well casted. Then Sebastian rescues Izzy, brings him back to his apartment, has this magic herbal medicine, and all it takes is one drop on Izzy's tongue and she's better. What? And I was like, don't do it. Don't take it. Don't do it. Why would you take another random substance you don't know about from a stranger after the last time you did that got you addicted to Yin Fen? And then like, there's no consequences to it. This is what bothers me about the Sebastian arrival, right? We have this whole build to Sebastian and we're told like, we're gonna see him in the context of someone we already know. Why did they say that? Like, that was just a complete lie. We don't know Sebastian. And if Sebastian was an Alder Tree, what the fuck was that whole thing with Alder Tree and the Yin Fen? Why did he have it? Why did he give it to her? Why did, why? He's just random evil Alder Tree. I just, what the f just like they can't keep a secret, like they can't hold on to a conflict for longer than like 10 minutes. This Izzy going through withdrawals thing was really interesting and I wanted to see it be hard. No, Sebastian has a secret drop of herbal medicine for that. Oh, Sebastian, I can't, I don't touch it. I hate him, I hate him. <laughs> like he wasn't even bad yet. Like it was even worse like watching him be nice cause I was like, stop it, stop it. Get away from Izzy, get away. Why did Izzy stay over at this random stranger's house? 
house. Like, I just don't understand. Yeah, he's cute, but like, is there a random stranger? And while Izzy's at Sebastian's apartment and he's making her tea, we have to see Sebastian like burning his hand over the stove. Why did we need to add this? Why did we? Why? Back with Valentine, we have this scene where Clary and Jace are in there with him, and Valentine spills the beans. Oh man, looks like you haven't told her yet. What? What is it? What? 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 No, stop. Uh, you can tell me anything. I'm your sister. You're not my sister, Clary. And Jace is like weirdly dramatic about this. The next time we see him, I can't even take this seriously at all. We're on the roof, and he's turned away. And Alec comes up to him and he's like, Chase, are you okay? And I talk to the screen while I'm watching Shadowhunters constantly and I'm like, no, I'm not okay. And then Chase turns around and he's like in full on hysterical tears. Who is this? It's like just like the most un Jace moment I've seen in my entire life. Why was it written this way? The reveal is so comical. I can't. Jace, are you okay? No! <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> I paused and laughed hysterically. I went to sleep and I was just laying there thinking about it. Gaggling. Jace never is hysterical. Like, <laughs> never. He gets mad and he hides his emotions. This new Jace, oh my god, there's been so many lines these past few episodes. I'm just like, who are you? He comes up to Clary after they kiss in the ceiling court and he's like, Clary, we should talk about this. We have to discuss this, Clary. And like, he's talking to Izzy and he's like, Izzy, I can't just erase my feelings. I'm <laughs> just like, I did a double thing. Like, who are you right now? Jace is here talking about feelings. Jace is a sexy, nimble, more charming, angsty Chandler Bing. Like, we don't have these sorts of discussions. Can Jace interest you in a sarcastic remark? That's what Jace does. At the end of this episode, we're raising Azaziel to try to find Izzy, who, like, is right outside with Sebastian. Like, she's nothing has happened. But, like, we're all in a panic. Magnus raises Azazel from a pentagon. As soon as it's happening, I'm like, he's gonna escape the pentagon. He's a greater demon. This is a bad idea. What happens? He escapes the pentagon. You can't hold me! No one's managed to kill him yet. He just kills people. He escapes the pentagon. It's kind of like in the darkest minds when they turn on the white noise and the kids, like, can't get up. They're all like, ah! But like Jace manages to fight it and turn on one of his ruins without a stele, which now apparently is his angelic ability, which is like so weird because that's the most basic thing that shadow hunters do is like use the tattoos that are on their skin. The activating thing is purely a show add-on. Like once you have the tattoo, it activates when you need it. That's why you put it on. Jace has these like extraordinary fighting jumping abilities, but in the show he can just like activate his tattoos and apparently others. This episode ends with Azazel like grabbing onto Magnus's head and grabbing onto Valentine's head. Valentine and Magnus have been Freaky Friday. <laughs> Like, I asked Cassie, what two characters would do Freaky Friday if you could? Little did I know that this was coming as a real thing on the show. Oh my god, it was so funny. Valentine was so good at acting like Harry Shum acts as Magnus. On point, I just could see his entire expression in Valentine's face. So this episode starts off, Alec is going to check on Magnus because he was being weird after the demon touched their head. He goes to Magnus's house. Magnus is there. To Talking to Azazel, greater demon. Five minutes before this, Sebastian was talking to us about like where his Achilles heel is and it's like below certain vertebrae, blah, 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 blah. Alec gets to Magnus's apartment. Azazel is there and Alec's like, don't worry, I got this. Has his bow, slides away, shoots one arrow and bye Azazel. It was nice having you for 10 minutes. I was in hysterics. Literally, this greater demon that we introduce, that we make out to be so powerful. We find his vulnerable spot and it takes one arrow in a one second fight and he poofs into a bunch of smoke. Bye! You couldn't have made that a little more difficult. The next time Jay sees Alec, I just was so funny. I heard you banish his Azeal. Congratulations. <laughs> 
Back to that scene with Alec and Magnus. Matthew Dario has become so Alec-like for me, and I love it. He's trying to figure out what's up with Magnus, and he's like, You're acting weird. Terse. I broke out laughing, because like, this is such an Alec thing to say. A lot of weird shit going on, but Matthew Dario nailing Alec. At the end of this episode, we have to switch back, and Azaziel's gone, and it's like, Oh no, how are we gonna switch ourselves back? Don't worry, we just gotta like fix up a little drink. Say an incantation. This scene was so ridiculous. Again, like, I was in hysteria. I was like, what even is happening right now? Did you want flow up off the ground? It's like at the end of Beauty and the Beast. They float up off the ground, rotate in a circle. Their eyes are like black hole. Like, what's happening? Right at the end of the episode, Claire's walking down the hallway and Sebastian, and, like, helped her get her rune ability back. She's like, how can I thank you? And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna ask her out. He's gonna ask her out. And then he did. How would you feel about dinner? And I was just Excellent. Having Sebastian in the show has made it so much more fun for me. This most recent episode, I was dying. I was dying. Then the last scene of the episode, the Inquisitor has found out that Jace is at Harrendale. And we've made such a big deal. Like, the Harrendales are shadow hunter royalty. I don't think they could have said the word Harrendale more times. Jace, here is the Harrendale necklace. It was your father, Stephen Harrendale. And it's time for you to know what it truly means to be a Harrendale. You know Jay. Jay would have just been like real cynical skeptical. Even if he was feeling feelers, he'd just be like, okay. And like go away and feel by himself. Jay looks down the necklace, grips it to his heart. Jace and this emotional guy. I cannot marry the two. Next we had episode 13, my least favorite episode of this chunk. We open in the harvest moon and Jace is at the bar and like seven feet away are Clary and Simon. Like being all dainty and it just feels so so staged and forced. Jace is trying to make Grandmama proud. This is what it means to be a Herenda. So he's on board with injecting all the downworlders with tracking chips. He goes to the Harvest Moon like, Maya, you're first. Oh my God. And then she has this line where she's like, I thought Shadowhunters were more evolved than that. And I'm over here like, really? Have you met Shadowhunters? We have this other scene where Raphael is talking about in the past how Shadowhunters used to be extra disgusting and like collect spoils and stuff. Raphael's talking to Izzy like she doesn't know anything about her own history. She's like, oh, I didn't know that. This is what they learn. Their history. What? And then at the end, Jace and Maya kiss. And it's just all a weird jumble. Episode 14, we open on Jace playing piano. And I was like, oh my god, Jace is playing piano. This is like a city bonds. And then Sebastian comes in. I'm like, oh, yeah, go away. Leave me. Sebastian throughout the next three episodes just like wanders around the institute giving his two cents and advice. Like he just shows up everywhere. And everyone's having problems. You know what? I have the perfect lecture to fix this. You have to feel your emotions. There's nothing wrong with emotion. I'm Sebastian. And I'm here to save the day. When Chase is playing the piano, he talks about how Valentine used to like like break his fingers every time he messed up. So that's just listening like, oh my god, me too, me too, me too. And I did really like the symmetry of the episode, how we started with Jace playing, and then at the end we see someone's playing the same song and we come up and it's Sebastian. I thought you had a thing for Clary. Why were you with Maya when you had a thing for Clary? And it's like so uncomfortable because Sebastian has a thing for Clary. Jace was made head of the institute by Grandmama. Jace gives the head of the institute job to Alec. Alec has his first assignment for Jace and Clary. He needs them to go to the ceiling court. Immediately I'm like, oh, here we go. Before Clay's can get to the ceiling court entrance, Simon's like, oh, I'll be attending as well. This isn't middle school, Simon. This is life or death. Have you been to middle school? That was very nice. We get into the ceiling lands. Immediately, Simon's like, oh my God, blood. And he goes to the a tree that's like covered in bees and stuff and smashes some with his hand. Couldn't Clary have just touched a pointy flower, got a cut and licked her finger after. Those weird vines, they took away from the scene for me. Can we just be like, you're trapped down here forever, Clary, unless you kiss the what of it We have this whole scene where the queen wants to talk to Simon alone. And the queen's like obsessed with Simon's music. She totally wants to sponsor him. Like, I can help you anytime. Have you ever heard of Sia and Bjork? That was me. I can totally be your agent. What's happening? After the whole Seely Queen debacle, well, Simon and Clary are done. Raphael is actually the first one to pick up on something being off about Sebastian. He watches him watching Izzy and he straight up is like, you look at 
her like a predator. I was like, yeah, Rav! You see, we're on the same page. Izzy's super sad, and she walks in on Clary crying. And they have a really cute little moment. I like that a lot. We have a moment where Sebastian goes into Valentine's jail cell. Valentine looks at him and is like, do I know you? And right then and there, I was like, oh no. What are they doing? For a second, I was like, are they gonna have another actor? Like, he's using a shapeshift ruin, obviously, which doesn't exist in the books. So is he going to shapeshift ruin back into a different actor. But I was like, no, he's too good. So where are they going with this? On to episode 15. We open up with Simon. He's upset. He is heartbroken. He's in the harvest mood. He takes a shot of plasma. Like for a second, it looks like we're going to do the Maureen storyline and they kind of tease it. And then it isn't. And it's weird. We got this scene with Sebastian just like casually ironing. And then he's just like casually ironing his hair. And it's just like, why? Why? Even when we find out why, I'm still like, why? Valentine has this really quick line where he's talking about Jace's mother. I'm pretty sure he says pregnant again. Like when I learned that she was pregnant again, and I'm just like, Again? Where are we going with this? Aline shows up in this episode. Everything's just happening so early. Like, we're gonna burn through all six books, like, within four seasons. When they do something that's from the book, they, like, just pull a little bit of it and don't use it in its actual context. And it's so frustrating for my brain. It's like, well, now we can't go to that exact scene because we already did part of it without the rest of it. Like, for example, the next episode, when they go to Idris, Clary falls into Lakeland, she drinks a little bit of it, she's having hallucinations, Izzy has to come and save them, and I'm like, oh my god, are we already doing this? Like, Izzy fights Sebastian scene? Like, Jace fights Sebastian? Izzy fights Sebastian? But then we didn't do that because other stuff has to happen first to give Izzy that dry but now we can't have it in the same place it's weird the whole episode we're talking about how Izzy is in charge of this mission to transport Valentine to Idris and it comes to the end and they open the portal they get Magnus into the portal because she wants the best of the best to do this portal what's the point of having the best do it if they're not like directing the portal to a specific place right the first people to go through the portal are both Jace and Izzy the two people responsible for getting Valentine there I mean it would have been as simple as Chase and Izzy on either side of Valentine, walking with him through the portal. Why wouldn't the head people be attached to the prisoner? What the f***? Valentine and the guy that brought him away appear in this cabin in Idris. Valentine goes up to Sebastian she's like, what do you want from me? Sebastian like undoes his shirt shift well, This is half second of suspense like, oh my god, who's he gonna turn into? It is a burnt up blob. This Valentine decided to send him to hell and he came back and he's just, a, he turned, he's a burnt blob. Oi! You can't take that burnt blob costume seriously. Will Tudor is so good as Sebastian. But like every time he turns to that blob, it belittles the fear instilled by him. I love when Will is being fucking full on weirdo Sebastian. When he has these temper tantrums with daddy. You're right. You're, you're right. Your sister does love you. You're, that's great. You ride that wave. I get giddy inside. Like, oh my god, he's doing such a good job. <laughs> Creepy and but then he turns into like this blob that kills flowers. I wish that he could just wield his demon power in Sebastian form and just have his eyes turn black. Like it's as easy as that. Because the suit looks silly. Can you imagine like having a Shadow Hunter fight with him in that suit and Jace in his regular Jace clothes? Episode 16 opens up with a flashback of Sebastian emerging from a pentagram. Then we go to Simon and Maya, and I'm loving the Simon Maya chemistry and the Simon Izzy chemistry. I love Simon helping Izzy train Max. It's so cute and it's so fun and it feels so true to their characters. And I'm loving like Maya going to Yom Kippur dinner with Simon. I like how they're building this Izzy Max relationship. We really have some groundwork for how devastating it's gonna be when something happens happens to Max. Max still looks like such a baby. Like, I can't take any of this seriously that he's supposed to like go on missions. What? But oh my god, I love Sissy. I love the Sissy chemistry happening. I love the scene in episode 17 when they're in Jade Wolf and he makes a Star Wars reference and they don't get it and he's like, oh my god, we have to go watch it right now. 
Max asks Izzy if all vampires are like this, and she's like, no. <laughs> Mary makes her first portal. We've got like the broken mirror shards left in the institute. They take like little bits and pieces of all different scenes. Like the mirror shards are from that mirror portal being broken in City of Bones. But like these mirror shards just like were a broken portal. They create a collage with like different pieces of different books and like they don't exactly fit together. But we're just rolling with it. After Clary makes the portal and they land in Lake Land and they get out and stuff. James is like, I can't believe you made a portal. Boopity boopity boop. It took warlocks thousands of years to manipulate that. It kind of just hurt my heart because Henry invented the portal like a little over a hundred years ago. Uh, credit where credit is due. Sebastian confronts Valentine. Valentine sent him to hell. He became this burnt blob. Sebastian's about to send Valentine and the soul sword down the f- to eat it. Valentine's like, no, you don't understand. It's the, my biggest regret. I love you. I think about you every day. If you thought about me every day, you don't understand me. He grabs the sword, wraps his hands around it, and he's bleeding. And he's just like, daddy loves you. Daddy thinks about you every day. You're daddy's favorite warrior. And Sebastian just like eating it up. Oh my God. Daddy really loves me. I have a daddy. My daddy cares. Oh, it's just great. It's just my favorite. Our Shadow Under crew gets back to the Institute and Clary realizes, oh my god, the angel didn't mean that you were alive. He meant that my brother Jonathan was alive. Dun, dun, dun. The camera zooms across the block to reveal Sebastian looking out through a window and we see Valentine step into the frame. Jonathan? And I pause the show because I'm dying. I have to write down a joke. I pause the show to write down. Jonathan, do you want me to make you spaghetti? <laughs> Remember when I used to make you spaghetti? I unpause and the next line out of Valentine's mouth is dinner is served. Oh no! No, he didn't! Is it spaghetti? We follow the camera and the table is set with spaghetti! No! Oh my god, I was full on squealing and laughter. Like he couldn't even say anything. Like Jonathan, are you ready to dispatch our plan to take over the world? But no, Jonathan, dinner is my famous spaghetti with sauce. I can't. That's just so funny. And that's how we end episode 16. Now we get to my favorite one, episode 17. We open Clary's having a nightmare. I don't know if you remember, like in episode 2 or 3, she was having a nightmare and she was like, oh. Uh, being pretty loud. This one, she's like, oh, oh. She's like very calmly having a nightmare. Three seconds later, Shirtless Jay strides into the room. Shirtless Jay, where the hell did you come from? Where were you last time she was having a nightmare? We're really trying to push the Jay's chemistry happening. Like, I want to feel it. I'm not really feeling it. I really feel them more as a brother-sister vibe, which is weird. And then we go to Sebastian and Valentine. And Sebastian has, like, the shoe that his mom kept. I thought you said my mommy didn't love me. That doesn't mean she loves you. She thought nothing of you. Well, my sister's different. My sister's the coolest. I'm just eating this up. We cut to like some garage where Valentine's keeping Cleophas. He's like, there's another way to fix the world. I'm gonna get a wish from the angel Raziel. And Cleo's like, that's impossible. It wouldn't be the first time I accomplished something impossible. Cleophas turns to Sebastian to like share a look with him like he's ridiculous. Sebastian just stares her down and is like, that's right, my father's the cleverest in all the land. Next we know Sebastian's striding into this bookstore owned by another warlock that was BFFs with Jocelyn and helping her hide the mirror, which apparently isn't the lake, but like an actual literal mirror. And he has a little temper tantrum. That warlock attacked me first, father! Don't look at me like that! I am a good boy! I love when Valentine's like, and then we get to be the heroes. Isn't that what you want? That's, that is what I want. I'm a hero. I'm a good boy. Simon goes into the harvest and ask Maya on a real date. I love that Luke thinks he's there to see him and he's like, buddy, I gotta go. We can talk later, okay? Oh, I'm actually here to see Maya. And Luke just like, oh. <laughs> and what's the way? So Jonathan kills this warlock that knows where Jocelyn's mirror is and like there happens to be some flowers in the room. The callback to the dead flowers was so funny. How do you know Jonathan was here? The flowers, they're dead. Just like when he was a baby in that memory my mom showed me. What are the chances? While Clary and 
Chase are investigating the scene of the crime. Sebastian just like pops in. Like, hey guys, what's up? Chase and Clary are engaged in this argument about Jonathan. You can't trust him. He's dangerous. He's my brother, Chase. Don't we want to give him a chance? Watching Sebastian and Chase go back and forth is so much fun. I feel like they're setting us up for the Jonathan the show to have a redemption path to try to be good. Towards the end of the episode, we have that scene where Sebastian comes in Clary's room. And I'm just like, oh my god, no, stop. Stop it. He's like, how do you feel about your brother Jonathan? I think he deserves a chance. You know, you never know. He's my brother. And he just kisses her. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, you don't know how brothers work. Stop. It really starts to paint this more realistic picture of Jonathan. Like, he's so messed up. In this episode, Alec doesn't tell Magnus that the soul sword is not in the clave's possession. Magnus finds out, gets upset. I really don't like how Magnus reacts though, because Magnus has been alive for thousands of years, but like he still has this weird temper tantrum where he won't calm down and he immediately is like, the Sealy Queen is right. Shadowhunters will never change. And it's like, you don't jump to conclusions so drastically like that when you're not new to human beings and you're not new to the stuff around you. I don't know. It just was so out of character. It kind of took me out of it. The episode ends, Max has found one single hair in the box that Jonathan forgot to scoop out so that they couldn't track him. He tracks the hair to Sebastian. We're all set up for something bad to happen to Max. So we'll see what happens from here. I love to hear your thoughts on any of the things I discussed or any of the things I didn't discuss. What was your favorite and least favorite episode of this seven episode arc? I'm Christine. I make videos every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. <laughs> Goodbye.